Hi, Rich Neapolitan. On the last talk, I introduced decision analysis and, and representing problems in decision analysis using influence diagrams. Today, I'm going to um, show you some actual influence diagrams developed using Netica and how we use them. The same influence diagrams will be available to you in Blackboard, so you can uh, play around with them and, and, you know, freely in your leisure hours. All right, so I'm, that's done with, that's all for PowerPoint. I'll illustrate use of influence diagrams now using Medica. All right, let me call up the first one, which is my simple stock example. All right, now we're in Medica. I've built this influence diagram to modeling that same stock decision we talked about before. There's not really much to show here. Here's the utility node. It depends upon the values. You can actually click on properties and then you can see the table that shows you the information I told you before. If the market's up and, and if you make the decision um, to buy the stock and the market's up, you'll have this amount and so on. These are all the various amounts. And so you build this in this table within within Netica. Um, but you don't actually see it in the diagram that appears on the surface. And the, the diagram is already solved, all right? Uh, well, well, you know, I said I've already told the system to solve the diagram. And you can see the decision to buy the stock has expected value 1150. The decision, the decision to leave the money in the bank has expected value 1050. I think I've used slightly different numbers in this problem than I used in the one I showed you last time. But the idea is exactly the same. This decision maximizes expected utility, so that is the one that you would make. All right, so that's that's the simple decision. Now let's look at let's look at a, a decision which I did not um, show you before. It's the decision of whether to um, bring your umbrella on a particular day. It, it's it's a, it's slightly more complex than the last one, but not as complex as the spiffy car one. So I, I'd like to look at it. There's uncertainties whether it's going to rain or not rain. I think there's a 40% chance of rain. There's the weather forecast, which you have the option to consult before you make your decision, which is whether to take your umbrella or not take it. Again, like I say, you don't see the, the conditional probabilities unless you look at properties. And these are the conditional probabilities. If it rains, there's a 90% chance that the weather forecast will say rain. All right, so this is the true positive rate. If it does not rain, there's only there's a 20% chance. This is based upon historical data of how good the weather forecast is. All right, so, so those are the numbers that are specified for the Bayesian network component of this influence diagram, but you don't see them. What you see is the prior probability of rain and, not, and no rain in the influence diagram. All right. Um, this is the utility node. It depends upon two things, whether it rains and whether you take your umbrella. Let's look at properties of this node. See, if it rains and you take your umbrella, you have a utility of 80%. If it does not rain and you do not take your umbrella, that's the best thing that can happen. You didn't have to lug your umbrella around all day and it also did not rain. If it rains and you did not take it, your suit gets ruined. That's the assumption. That's the worst thing that can happen. It says utility of zero. These are utilities in the, in the middle, and this is also explained in, in the contemporary artificial intelligence text, how to give the worst outcome value zero, the best outcome value one, and then ascertain these values in the middle. These two values both have the same outcome because they mean you lug your umbrella around all day, and it doesn't matter whether it rains or does not rain. Your suit does not get ruined, but you've suffered by running, by lugging your umbrella around all day. So the worst outcome, if it rains, you don't have it, your suit gets ruined. Best outcome, if not raining, not taking it, no, no suffering with the umbrella and no suit ruined, and then these are in the middle because your suit did not get ruined, but you lugged the umbrella around. All right. Here is what is different about this problem and the last one is that this weather forecast will be known to you 
at the time that you decide to take your umbrella. So right now, if you didn't consult the weather forecast, the, the utility of taking umbrella is 0.8, and you would take it over not taking, because the utility of not taking it is 0.6. But now you, you consult it, and let's say it says rain. Well, the utility of taking umbrella has gone up, because likely of rain has gone up, and now you would certainly take it. But if you consult the weather forecast that does not rain, not taking it has a higher expected utility, so now you would not take your umbrella. And you actually, this doesn't seem like the kind of decision you would actually model with an influence diagram of every day, make a, make a decision about your um, umbrella, but we do implicitly kind of make these decisions based upon the weather forecast. And, and what decision analysis does and in influence diagrams is they formally model decisions so you, so you can articulate your preferences in, in an analytical way. All right, let's go on to... Uh, Another example, here is that example about buying the spiffy car and it may or may not have a bad transmission. This is the, the variable concerning the car, whether it has a bad, could we call it the probability of, of lemon here, that means it has a bad transmission. It's the probability of the transmission being bad or good depending upon whether the car is a lemon or not. This is the probability of the test result concerning whether the transmission is bad or good. You have the decision to run the test. Like we said before, run the test, buy the car or don't buy the car. Then if you do decide to run the test, then you have the second decision of, of buying or not buying the car. And as we said before, the, your, your final outcome depends upon what? Whether you run the test, because that costs $200, whether you buy the car, all right, and whether the transmission is bad or good. Because that, that the test result doesn't affect the utility. The test result tells you something about the utility, but it doesn't affect it. And neither, neither does whether the car is a lemon or a peach. What really matters is whether the transmission is bad or good. Right here, the expected value of, of, of the first decision is is made. Notice there's no values here because you're not in a position to make that decision yet. And it says you should buy the car. Don't run the test, but buy the car. So you would stop at this point. You would never make this decision. You would never run the test. You would just buy the car. But I want to illustrate this further. So I'm going to um, just say that you ignored that advice and decide you don't have to take the decision of the decision else program and you said to run the test. So I'm going to click on running the test here. See now you've got the second decision to make whether to buy the car or not buy the car and right now buying the car has a higher utility. But because you decided to run the test you're going to know this test result and that's why there's an arrow in here when this decision is made. If the test result is positive, you will not buy the car because the trans that's indicative of the transmission being bad. Remember, positive results are often not good, <laughs> good results. But if the test is negative, you will definitely buy the car. So see, if we do decide to run the test, then the test result does, in fact, give us information about whether we should buy the car or not. All right, so this is... A little bit more complex example than, than the last one in the sense that we have two decisions to make and we have three variables in our Bayesian network portion of the influence diagram. All right, let's proceed now. What do I have next here? All right, now we actually have the CAT scan example. I say this is a good example because it, it, it shows the kind of problem you can really run into in the medical domain and and the, and this would be hard to identify how to do this other than with the seat of the pants answer without formally identifying all the variables as we have done we have our first decision which is whether to have the cat scan our second decision of whether to have the median and median i never say this word median escopy and the third decision of whether to have the thoracotomy 
Notice the first decision is solved, and it says, it actually says just barely you should have the CAT scan. All right, this is a good thing because it help us, um, well, I mean, it's good for us for illustration purposes because it should, can show the, the, the um, you know, how things can unfold. It tells you to have the CAT scan, so you have it. Now your next decision shows up with its possible values. It's telling you not to have the medianoscopy. Medianoscopy? I said, no, median. I didn't say it right. Um, it's telling you not to have it. But remember, this result is going to be known when you make this decision. So we don't just not have it. We go and see what this test will say. If the test is positive, you do have it. All right? If the test is negative, you do not have it. M2 is, is greater. So if this is negative, you do not have it. And we make that, let's just proceed here. We make the decision not to have it. Let's say what, let's go on here. If, all right, so we make the decision that said not to have it. We go to this decision, and now it's overwhelming that you should have the thoracotomy. Remember, that makes sense because if, if distant, if, if this condition was negative, there was an advantage to having the thoracotomy, and that's why it, the overwhelming decision is now to have it, because this test being indicative of, of, the, of the condition not being present in, indicates that you should have the thoracotomy, because that is the case where it's beneficial. Now let me remove all these findings. I can go up here to do that. And we have, we have the CAT scan, and let's say the test comes back positive. Now it tells me I should have this test. All right. Now I have this test. And now before deciding on the thoracotomy, I'm going to get this test result. Remember before I didn't have the test result. Right now it says to have the thoracotomy, but if this test result is positive, I don't have it. Because that means that's the indication that that's the case where it probably is not going to help me. But if it's negative, I do have it. All right. So I think this example shows how relatively complex these matters can be. But by laying out these three decisions in a row, we can, and modeling the problem, we can go through the process, see what the first decision is, make that decision. Based upon that, make our second decision, and based upon that, now finally make our third decision, which would be to have the thoracotomy. All right, so that has been um, the, the examples I wanted to show you, the four examples. They will be made available to you in Blackboard, and you can play with them more as you like. That's all for today.